Hi there, I'm Bernadette Wagner, Community Outreach Coordinator for Hospice of Washington County, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to today's episode of Healing Hope and Health. Across the nation, November is recognized as National Hospice and Palliative Care Month. Accordingly, every year in November, Hospice of Washington County hosts an event designed to educate the public about quality end-of-life care and the highly trained team of professionals who deliver that care. Hospice Washington County's National Hospice Month event, Helping Hands of Hospice, will be held on Wednesday, November 16th at Fountainhead Country Club. At this time, I'm pleased to introduce Karen Giffen, Senior Director of Development, Community, and Public Relations, who joins us to share details about this exciting event. Welcome, thanks for being here. Thank you, Bernadette. Sure, so I just mentioned uh, Helping Hands of Hospice will be at uh, Fountainhead Country Club on November 16th. Perhaps you could tell our, little, our viewers a little bit about the time and um, uh, what time the doors will open. Sure, uh, we will open doors at five, and from 5 to 16, we will have a social time, uh, dinner time that you can come in and get a buffet. And then um, at 6.15, our program will begin. We'll have desserts on the table, and it should end at 8, 8 that evening. Okay, and can you describe the event? Uh, what, what sorts of foods, what sort of music? Do you know that? Sure. Um, well, the music is uh, Prophets of the Abstract Truth. It's some blues music, but it also goes with our testimonials, which is the main point of our program. And we have um, families that we've had patients and they talk about uh, their uh, hospice experience and okay. what it meant to them. This year we're also having some staff testimonials as well because they are the helping hands right, at hospice. Right. Um, and the music goes in with it. And then as an added um, addition, we have a couple of our staff members that are very talented, they'll be singing along as well. Oh, that's great, that's great. So it's a little bit of a 360 experience. So you have the patient and it's their family's uh, interpretation of hospice as well as the staff who provided that care. Yes, and as you know, hospice has a team, team approach um, where they have CNAs and nurses and social workers and chaplains um, and volunteers and then also uh, the physicians, their physician and, and our Dr. Baker work together. And it's a team approach to work with the patients and the family for what they want for end of life. And I think this will really showcase that it is about the patient and their family and then also the team and how they work together. That's great. Uh, what does it cost to attend this event? And it's a free of charge event. And okay. the reason it's free of charge is because we want to educate the public on what the hospice experience is about mm -hmm. and of what hospice is doing in the community. Um, and I think that it's very important. I don't think you get that experience if you haven't gone through it. Mm -hmm to hear about it and right. find out about it. And it also makes it real to hear, hear about an actual patient. Especially from the, those who have already uh, lived that experience. That's right. Well, Karen, um, you said it's free, but are there tickets? Do individuals have to register? How does that work? Sure, we do um, would like people to register so we know how many people are coming and we also sit them at specific tables. So they can call our number at 301-791-6360. Um, they can also go on our website and email us as well. And again, it's free of charge, but we want to reserve the seat so we know everyone's coming. Last year we did fill up, so uh, please call right away if you'd like to come. It's a great experience to find out about uh, the hospice experience, meet the team, see what's in the future. Um, and then we also tell a little bit about uh, some of our programs that are coming up, uh, like Doey's House and the okay. WISH program and the Benevolence program. We have so many uh, great programs and we do, um, we have the information there and people can pledge that night. So what is, uh, uh, what is it that you hope that people take home? What's the take home message from this Well, event? I think number one that um, the experience of hospice is very important to the community. Mm -hmm. In fact, we service about 54% of the deaths last year are those 35 years and older. And also, it's not bad to talk about. It's important to talk about. Right. And it's an important mission. And as we move forward hospice in the future with Doey's House, um, and uh, we have so many more programs with our life centers, um, we want people to be talking about that and that how uh, important hospice is in the community. And so that's a little bit of a change from the uh, how hospice first started in that hospice of Washington County is really seeking to um, journey with people throughout life, not just meeting them for the first time at the very end of life. That's correct, that's why we have our life center. So you meet us, um, now and then when you need us, 
you know us. And you feel comfortable turning to us. That's yes. Right. That's great. Well, Karen, we have a little bit of time, so I was wondering if you could tell us, uh, is there a certain story that really resonates with you, either a patient or a volunteer, that you would like to share to kind of highlight your understanding of hospice? Sure. I think really um, I've been at hospice about a year now, and one of the great experiences we have is de uh, delivering wishes, and we just recently hit the 100th wish, um, over 100 wishes now. And when we go into the homes with the staff who know the team, who know the patient so well, they'll tell us they need a birthday party or they might want an anniversary or they need something special and we're able to fulfill that uh, end of life wish for them. And we see them uh, enjoying this. Um, in fact, uh, recently we had a wish where one of our social workers actually sang to the patient. Mm -hmm. And it w it's just an unbelievable experience and it's such an honor to work for hospice. Yeah, and I think it's a, a real honor to feel like you are um, fulfilling their final w wishes and um, giving them dignity at the end of life. Yes, yeah. definitely. And then we also hear um, things needs from the benevolence care. Mm -hmm. uh, people may not have food or sheets or something during end of life or money for funeral expenses and we're there for them. That's great. Well, thank you so much for taking time to be here today. Thank you. I'm grateful to Karen for joining us today. I'm also grateful to her and her staff for hosting programs intended to import, impart important information about quality care at the end of life. I'm sure we've all heard the old saying that knowledge is power. Just as knowledge enriches the process of living, it can also enrich the process of dying. I hope that you will consider joining Karen and me at Helping Hands of Hospice on November 16th at Fountainhead Country Club. Remember, the doors open at 5 and the program begins, I think, at 6.15. Although this event is free and open to the public, like Karen said, call as soon as possible. Please call 301-791-6360. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time. My team. Expert care. Close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. Living with a chronic disease is a daunting situation. But with help from Life Care of Washington County, you don't have to feel overwhelmed. With our palliative care team, we can help you manage symptoms and the weight of illness. Life Care of Washington County is there by your side, maximizing treatment options, increasing the quality of life, and partnering with you as you face the challenges ahead. Life Care of Washington County, we're with you. You don't have to struggle alone. Call today for a private consultation. I've been working with Linda McCollum now for 20 years. The people in the office are very knowledgeable of what they do, and they're also very caring and customer-oriented. My little granddaughter, when she, she says, Pappy, I love you, that's just so precious. If I wouldn't have had the hearing aid on, I wouldn't have heard it. Let McCollum Hearing Center help you rediscover the sounds of your life. Welcome back to Healing Hope and Health. It's my pleasure to again welcome Kathy Campbell, Hospice of Washington, Washington County's Manager of Bereavement Services. Kathy has been on the program in the past to discuss the many services, workshops, and support group her team offers to hospice families and members of the community who are grieving the loss of a loved one. Today, she joins to share some exciting news. Welcome, Kathy. So glad you're here. Thank you for having me. So you have some big news. What's up? I do, I do. We're very excited. Our bereavement team, uh, which is now stationed at our main office on Northern Avenue, is going to be moving. We are going to be moving downtown in Hagerstown to our, our Hagerstown Community Life Center. So we are very, very excited. It's a big change. Uh, but we're very, very much looking forward to it. So the whole team will be there um, and you'll be offering the same services or different services? Well, actually our services will not change. As a matter of fact, what our hope is, we're going to be able to expand our services just because we're changing venues. We're hoping to reach a brand new population that we've not been able to meet up until now. So we're really excited about that, but our services will continue. We'll have services right there at the Community Life Center. We'll continue to go out 
to homes and to schools and to community organizations to offer our services. Okay, maybe you could just highlight some of those services for folks who aren't familiar with all the many different things that you do. Absolutely. We have bereavement services that we provide to our the families of our hospice patients and we provide those services for 13 months or up to up to 13 months after the death of their loved one. All of these services though are also offered to the community at large. So there may be someone who had been ill for a long time but just didn't have hospice care or it could be someone who died very suddenly due to suicide or homicide or, or car overdose. Or, yeah. Exactly, perinatal death. Um, anyone in the community who would like some information, some education or some counseling services, uh, they, can, they can take advantage of our individual counseling, they can take advantage of our support groups that we offer, we offer educational workshops, um, and we provide these services to adults and to children, um, to families, to individuals. To so, couples? Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. It's such a gift that you all provide. Um, Kathy, I'm just going to make sure we mention that the Life Center, the Hagerstown Life Center is at 20 West Washington Street yes. on the third floor yes. and in the Grand Piano Building, right above Pretzel and Pizza Creation, so people can <laughs> exactly. kind of uh, check that out too. Uh, what are you most looking forward to about this change? Oh, so many things. Um, change is, even if it's good, positive change, change can be stressful on people, but we're very much looking forward to it. So that really does help with this. We're looking forward to being able to continue our services in the same manner that we have, but being able to engage with other people in the community and really become a part of a, an additional community. Right, so that sounds excited. great. Yeah. Uh, is this going to mean, um, any additional uh, outreach with businesses down there? Oh, absolutely, that, that's our hope. Our mm -hmm. hope is really to filter into the, the community um, mm -hmm. in that area and be able to meet new people and again, meet new individuals and or families or groups that might be able to take advantage of what we have to offer. Okay, and what if someone wants to uh, come see your new office? Is that, is that possible? Absolutely. We're going to, beginning November 1st, we're going to be starting to see our individual clients uh, in that center. Um, but after the first of the year, that's when we'll actually start to offer our support groups and workshops in that area. Um, but coming up in the beginning of December, December 5th, we are going to have an open house where we invite anybody from the community to come see the buildings, see our offices, meet the counselors, just come and get an idea of who we are and what we have to offer and just to introduce yourselves would be wonderful. And that open house will be on the 5th of December from 12 until two. Perfect. Now I know that there might be, people might be saying, well, where are we gonna park? Have you, and I'm sure you've already thought about that. Maybe you can talk about that. Well, and it really would be different for people depending on what they're used to, what they're comfortable with, but we are fortunate in that our location is, is I think ideal. It's in a very safe part of Hagerstown. It's a wonderful location. It's right in the center of town and right behind our building is a perfect parking deck uh, that people will, will be able to park right right behind our building. And we'll be able to validate their parking tickets sure so they will. don't have to pay. So that's a good we thing sure for will. them to know. Exactly. Um, well, perfect. I'm so glad that you were here to share that exciting news with us. Thank you. Thank you. Change is exciting, but for some, as Kathy says, it can be difficult. However, researchers tell us that the more we know in advance, the easier it is to adapt and accommodate. That's why I'm so grateful to Kathy for being on today's show and filling us in on this exciting change. Having this information in advance makes me feel both excited and comforted. It's good to know that even though the location of the bereavement team is changing, the incredibly helpful bereavement services offered by Hospice of Washington County will remain unchanged. Stay with us, we'll be right back after this short commercial break. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad he was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call Hospice today, Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. Living with a chronic disease is a daunting situation, but with help from Life Care of Washington County, you don't have to feel overwhelmed. With our palliative care team, we can help you manage symptoms and the weight of illness.
Life Care of Washington County is there by your side, maximizing treatment options, increasing the quality of life, and partnering with you as you face the challenges ahead. Life Care of Washington County, we're with you. You don't have to struggle alone. Call today for a private consultation. From the smallest item of jewelry to the largest ceramic elephant, every 10,000 Villages handcrafted product makes a remarkable journey. All over the world, our products travel similar paths, over thousands of miles and years of artistic tradition. Our handcrafted gifts represent work that builds villages and sustains souls. They are the dream of a better life made real. Every product is a miracle. Welcome back to Healing Hope and Health. Hospice of Washington County has three community life centers, which it's pleased to share with groups and individuals willing to lead programs or host meetings that strengthen the community. It's my pleasure to introduce one such community leader. Leslie Whaley is an artist who creates beautiful jewelry and enjoys painting acrylic abstracts. More than that, she's an artist who saw a need to build a community of artists that could support one another and with their considerable talents, in rich and beautified downtown Hagerstown. With that goal in mind, this past April, she founded the Hagerstown Artist Group, which meets at the Hagerstown Community Life Center. She joins us today to talk about the Hagerstown Artist and to explain what it means to the group to have a home. Welcome, Leslie. Leslie, Thank thanks for being here. Thank you. Sure, so Leslie, uh, how long have you ba actively been involved in the arts and what's your favorite sort of art to do? I think probably like all my life because my mom was an artist and um, my dad is still an artist okay. um, and so and it was my favorite subject at school. <laughs> okay and what was your favorite sort of art to do? Um, I used to be very much into the like Renaissance um, painters. Um, I'm, I'm still a huge fan of Leonardo da Vinci but um, as I've got older I've started to appreciate um, more modern abstract art and, mm -hmm. um, and that's actually where I've, I've ended up painting that sort of art now. That's great. Uh, as the founding member of the Hagerstown Artist Group, can you elaborate on why and how the group was formed? What was your personal motivation and what, what was um, um, what were you really thinking? It really became from, I've traveled a lot to um, art retreats and made some great friends that I'm good friends with on the internet. And I was like, wow, it would be terrific to have friends like that locally. And I just didn't find what I was looking for, and when I was part of um, part of the downtown movement, who do the pop up shops, and when we were organising that, we have a lot of artists, a lot of mm -hmm. local artists with terrific talent, and they didn't know one another. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, don't you know? Uh, you know, uh, and I thought that was a shame. And mm -hmm. I thought I saw there was a need um, for a lot of different media, um, just people needing that support and needing to know there's other artists like them with a passion in the community. And so I thought I'd, I would try it and, and see, and it grew. Um, well, how many members are in your group now? Well, uh, I started the Facebook page, and within 10 days, we had 130 members. Wow. So it grew very fast. And so are the artists, uh, do they practice with different medium? Yes, and we have uh, potters, um, we have furniture makers, we have uh, poets, um, comic book writers and creators, uh, fabric artists. Um, as long as, you know, uh, oil painting, acrylic painting, water photography, color, photography. Yeah. Um, and then um, we actually have, um, uh, well, it, it, at the meeting the other night, it, it was amazing. People said, oh, yes, I do that. And it, we, we're just finding out. It's a little of bit of everything. A, right? lot, a lot of everything. Yeah. Does your group have a mission? We do. Um, I really wanted to, um, I really believe in what Hagerstown is doing, um, supporting the arts. And I see it making a, a very big difference. Mm -hmm. um, I love Hagerstown. I've been here around 20 years and I, I was sad to see some of the declines it's had and I really wanted to be a part of um, making a difference. Okay. And um, so we, I felt it was very important that the group not only support each other, but we support each other in going into the community. That's great. Um, so that's, that's a huge part of our mission. And I know that you have uh, really want to be visible in the community, that you've done some projects. Would you care to elaborate on some yes, of the um, stuff? Yes, well, the group's not very old. It's only a few <coughs> months old, so um, it's a little limited right now. But um, we helped with Comic-Con. We painted some of the Pokemon figures on the library window. Um, next weekend, October the 22nd, we're helping the Bester Community of Hope with their community uh, baby shower. 
and the group's been asked to actually do belly painting. Instead of face painting? Yes. Well, we might be doing face painting as well, but, but yeah, belly painting and... Um, um, because it's a baby shower, right? Yes. It's a community, community baby shower, yes. right? Yeah, it's actually at Bester Elementary. And um, what so date is that? The 22nd. It's okay. from 11 till 2. OK. Yeah. So all the pregnant moms uh, should go get their bellies. Yes. Okay. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> they're also doing belly casting, I believe. Oh, cool. Yeah. OK. And um, do you have other planned community projects? Yes. We've um, been asked by um, uh, Locust Street uh, neighborhood group. They would like some murals painting on, on the ends of some uh, buildings down uh, on that street. But we ran out of time a little bit with the weather changing, so we're planning it for the spring. That's great. What does it mean to the Hagerstown artists to be able to call the Hagerstown Community Life Center their home, their meeting oh, place? Oh, it's vastly important. Um, we were in a real jam because I was unable to find a, a room to meet um, that was, didn't involve huge costs. And in fact, if you hadn't stepped so kindly stepped forward and offered that to us, I, it, probably wouldn't have happened because I was just really finding it so difficult, incredibly mm -hmm. difficult. Um, even with the resources I have with knowing people through the, the downtown movement, it just wouldn't have happened without you. Well, we're so glad that you're here today. We're glad that you're using the Life Center and we appreciate everything that the artists in Hagerstown do. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so grateful to Leslie for being on today's program and for all the ways she and the other members of the Hagerstown artists enrich and enliven our community. Robert L. Lynch, the president of Americans for Art, would stand in awe and appreciation of this group, for he said, quote, the arts empower, the arts give a voice to the voiceless, the arts help transform American communities, and as, and as I often say, the result can be better child, a better town, a better nation, and certainly a better world, end of quote. I'm grateful to the Hagerstown Artists and Hospice of Washington County is pleased to provide a home to this group so this group can focus on making our world more beautiful. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Barbers Carson Jewelers has been your community jeweler for over 110 years. We have the region's largest selection of diamonds, designer jewelry, including bridal, gold, and silver fashion jewelry, and fine Swiss timepieces. We strive to combine quality, expert personal attention, and affordable financing to create an exceptional shopping experience aimed at exceeding your expectations. At Carson's Jewelers, there's something for everyone that will bring a smile to that someone special in your life. I'm the hometown favorite. I'll outsmart you. I will beat you. I'll be surrounded by fans cheering me on. There's no place like home for fighting cancer. My turf. My time. My team. Expert care. Close to home. The John R. Marsh Cancer Center at Meritus Health. People don't realize it takes a lot to care for a family member in your home. John's dad was very headstrong, so I think that was a, a lot for him to get over and try to come to terms with that he had a terminal illness. I would recommend everybody to get hospice involved at the get-go. When, when you first learn about it, get it set up, it, it's going to make it, I mean, it, it's terrible what you're going through already, but it's going to make it easier for you in the long run because they, we couldn't have done it without them. Call Hospice today. Hospice of Washington County, when time matters most. Welcome back to Healing Hope and Health. It seems that collaboration, whether among individuals, organization, or governmental agencies, always leads to more positive outcome than when goals and challenges are attempted alone. Today, I'm pleased to talk about We Honor Veterans, an incredibly successful program that involves collaboration among all three. We Honor Veterans is the programmatic result of a powerful partnership between the National Hospice and Palliative Care Organization and the Department of Veteran Affairs. This program encourages hospices and VA facilities to establish volunteer corps that specifically address the unique needs of Americans' veterans. Volunteers, through respectful listening and inquiring, focused and a careful acknowledgement, seek to accompany and guide veterans through life stories toward a more peaceful ending. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Dick Grapes, one of Hospice of Washington County's longest serving veteran to veteran volunteers. Thank you, Dick, for being here today. You're more than welcome. So Dick, first let me thank you for being uh, on today's program and for your service to our country. And maybe you could tell our viewers about how many years and in which branch of the military you served. I was in the United States Navy. I, uh, 
enlisted in July of 1960. Okay. And served until July of 1963. And I retained a rate of a uh, readyman third class. Great. Well, thank you so much for your service. You're more than welcome. How long have you been a volunteer with Hospice of Washington County? I'm starting in my eighth year. Okay. And have you always been involved in the veteran to veteran program portion of it? Uh, most of it. Uh, Any time that they would need somebody to uh, work with a, a, volunteer or a veteran, I would be more than happy to, That's great. to do that. Uh, what made you choose, I know you have so many talents and passions, what made you choose to volunteer with Hospice of Washington County as opposed to another nonprofit? I had to use the services of hospice, or I didn't, but my family did. I had a brother and a father-in-law mm -hmm. in Cumberland, Maryland. Okay. And they had to use the hospice services uh, in the last days of their life. And I um, took a couple of years after the passing. Unfortunately, my father-in-law and brother passed within months of one another mm -hmm. in Cumberland. So after a couple of years of thought, I said, it's time to give back. That's so great. That, so I did. Well, and you know we're so grateful uh, for all that you do all the time. Uh, you're a companion volunteer, but as a veteran, uh, you are frequently, Lindsay Anderson, the Director of Volunteer Services, tell me they seek to pair you with another veteran. Can you describe a typical patient visit that you would do? A lot of the times, the um, well, most of the veterans I deal with have been male. Mm -hmm. And um, it, they, they tell me that it's, it's easier to talk to a, uh, a fellow serviceman. And um, I've sat with a, a gentleman that uh, said there's some things that he just can't share with family or wife or other people that uh, we, we talk about old salt days. Yeah, and you, and you have that, ex uh, that common bond, that right. experience, so you right. can relate to what he's saying. Uh, exactly. That's great. Is it mostly uh, talking and um, reviewing their lives? Yes. Okay. And, um, uh, for instance, the one fellow I have, he he only has one one son that lives uh, clear across country, mm -hmm. and uh, him and his son did a lot of hunting and fishing together, and we were able to share a lot of stories about his his hunting and fishing. And, That's great. And uh, it sort of fills in for the son that's not here. That's great. Um, we have a veteran, uh, Bob Driscoll, who works up in our Hancock uh, Community Life Center. He leads a support group up there for veterans. He also wrote a book called Returning for My Brothers. He often says, uh, quote, no one understands a vet like another vet. And I'm guessing that you would agree with that. I would agree 100%. Um, mm -hmm. I can, I don't know what it is, we just communicate real well together, mm -hmm. uh, sharing stories of our service, uh, fortunately, I didn't have to serve during any wartime, mm -hmm. but um, I was involved with the uh, invasion or the quarantine of Cuba. So okay. I spent almost two months circle on that island. Yeah. But uh, it's the stories and stuff that we can share. That it, common it, bond. It's, it's that common bond. Yeah, that's great. Do you have a particular story that highlights what it means to you personally to uh, interact with veterans? The um, what? What do you get out of being a veteran volunteer? I get more pleasure out of just uh, seeing the smile on the face when I walk in, and they they appreciate uh, even though it's nothing monetary or whatever. But the, the time that you take with them and to listen to their stories, and it just uh, fulfills something that's lacking there with any other communication. Yeah, that, uh, that desire to hear their stories right. and to respectfully listen, that's, yes. that's really a gift. Well, thank you so much for being here today and sharing your story and You're for being of service to our veterans. Thank you for having me. I'd like to thank Mr. Grapes for his service to our country and for his volunteer service to hospice patients who are also veterans. Hospice of Washington County greatly appreciates those who have served our country and seeks to honor them in, in numerous ways. In fact, one of the patient rooms at Dowie's House will be named to honor veterans. Additionally, on November 12th, Hospice of Washington County will host a We Honor Veterans Meals in recognition of the honor, courage, and loyalty displayed by our veterans. These restaurant-style meals, both breakfast and lunch, are free and open to veterans and one guest. 
It will be held at Hospice Washington County's main office, and if you'd like to register, call 301-791-6360. Thanks for joining us today. We hope to see you on November 12th.